In this video, we're going to go through the process of QR factorization. Um, and that's the process by which we take a matrix uh, and um, turn it into uh, a product of two matrices, matrices which we uh, commonly title Q and R. So we take A, uh, we take M, and we want to turn it into two matrices, these Q and R. Um, the Q over there is going to be the columns are going to be the uh, orthonormal basis of the column vectors in our original M, and the R is going to be an upper triangular matrix. Um, so I'm going to write out what that looks like, like this. Uh, here's M, uh, because it's matrix M, I'm going to call the column vectors little m1, little m2, up to mn. Okay, that's going to equal. Here's uh, our orthonormal basis of vectors. So um, uh, u1, u2, all the way up to un for however many columns that we want. Um, check the previous video for the Gram Schmidt process on how um, exactly it is that we calculate this from these, but we're going to do it in this video anyway, so you get to see it again. And finally, our R is some kind of upper triangular matrix that looks like that. So all zeros down here, and then on the diagonal and above, various numbers and things. That's R, that's Q, that's M. Uh, and that's a reference that we'll look at. Um, why is this important? This has a bunch of applications uh, with regression when you have various points you want to find a best fit line but none of them really lined up. This is kind of a way that you uh, fits, um, find a model that will like fit to your data. So there are lots of important reasons to do this uh, but we're primarily concerned right now with how to do it. Um, so we're going to use this example here uh, where my m is 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 5 um, and these are going to be my m1 and m2. So we need to start by finding our Q, and the Q is just uh, the Gram-Schmidt process. So we get to go through that again. Um, here's U1, and that's going to equal uh, 1 over the length of M1 times M1 itself. All right? And so I'll do that right now. Uh, 1 over what's the length of this? Uh, that's the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1. That's 4 plus 4 plus 1. That's 9. And the square root of 9 is just 3. So 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 1. It's not unlike the example we did in our Graham Schmidt video. All right, now U2. Luckily, there are only two uh, column vectors in this particular matrix, so we don't get too uh, complicated with U3 and U4. We just have U2, which is M2 minus uh, U1 dot M2 times U1, right? Okay, and then after that's done, we're going to have to divide by its length again. So. Uh, M2 minus, okay, U1 dot M2. That's going to be, okay, uh, 1 times 2 thirds, so 2 thirds, plus uh, 1 times 2 thirds, plus 5 times 1 third, that's 5 thirds. Oops, parenthesis times u2. And that equals uh, 2 plus 2 plus 5, that's 9. 9 thirds is 3. So that's 115 minus 3 times this. This is going to be 3. So 3 times that, that'll just knock out the thirds on each one. Um, so it's really 1 minus 2 uh, is minus 1. 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and 5 minus 1 is 4. 
great. Um, that is my U2. That is my U1. Sorry, that is not my U2. Uh, I forgot the last step, which is divide by its length. Um, so my real U2 is going to be, okay, 4 squared is 16 plus 1 plus 1, that's 18. So not the friendliest of numbers, but the square root of 18 times minus 1 minus 1, 4. And unfortunately, when you're doing Gram-Schmidt uh, or QR factorization, you do get a lot of square roots because we're dealing with uh, unit vectors. So that is my U2. That is my U1. I can now write my Q. Okay, right now you're probably wondering, how do I get my R? Uh, and there are actually two ways that you can get this. Um, one of them is uh, the smart way, I like to call it, but it requires you to like really look into these things and think about it deeply. Um, and if we do it the smart way, we realize that we've actually kind of already calculated R. And I'll explain what that means. Um, and then there's the um, more of a brute force me method which is we've already found our Q, we've already found our M. So to find our R, that's the same uh, as if we solve for R in that equation by multiplying both sides by Q transpose. Uh, and our Q transpose Q, because that is an orthonormal matrix, that'll give us just the unit vector, um, the identity matrix I. Um, so R will equal Q transpose M. So uh, we can multiply these matrices out, uh, and I'll do that last to just prove that that is correct. But here's what I mean when we've kind of already calculated R. Okay, first of all, uh, M is a 3 by 2 matrix. Q is a 3 by 2 matrix. So we know that R has to be a 2 by 2 matrix in order for us to get M. Um, so we had uh, Q, which was U1, U2. times some, uh, some two by two matrix R. I'm gonna say R1, R2, R3, and R4 equals our M1 and M2. Okay, and let's think about um, what it actually we're doing when we do matrix multiplication. Uh, we multiply uh, row by column. So there are three entries here. There are actually three rows, but that's, you don't really need to know that. We multiply this first row uh, by this first column to get this number. We multiply uh, this second row by this first column to get that number. And we multiply this third row by this first column to get this number. Now if we look up here at what we did right there, um, we found that U1 equals 1 over the length of M1. Uh, which turned out to be 3 uh, times M1. So from that, we know that M1, this is 3, so M1 equals 3 U1. So what does that tell us? Um, for our matrix R, that actually tells us about the first row. We've got a 3 here and a 0 right here. It takes a little bit of thinking and understanding to understand that, but um, right, this row here, um, which is three numbers, one, two, three, results from uh, three multiplied by each of the entries in this row. So if we're uh, cross multiplying each of these entries into this row, there's gotta be a three right here in order for that to result. And there needs to be a zero here because this numbers in this second row aren't being multiplied by anything. Similarly, um, for U2, let me just rewrite everything that we did. Um, we found out that U2 
Um, my last step was dividing everything by the square root of 18. And here I have m2 minus this number, which we discovered was 3. Right? Okay. So let's solve for what our m2 is. Uh, if I multiply both sides by the square root of 18, So uh, m2 is equal to 3u1 plus the square root of 18u2. OK? So that means m2 right here is equal to, when we multiply it, it's uh, this, all of these rows multiplied by this column right here. So all of the u1s get multiplied by 3. So there's got to be a 3 right there. And all of the u2s get multiplied by the square root of 18. So there needs to be a square root of 18 right there. So, and that is our result r. Um, and as you can see, we had really calculated it in doing this Gram-Schmidt process. That can be a little bit difficult to see, which is why I'm showing you this other method, which is easier on the brain, but more work. That, that is our answer, but um, we're going to just do this out, Q transpose M. And I'll try to do this as fast as possible because no one likes matrix multiplication. If we have Q transpose, that's just shifting everything so it's sideways. So the rows becomes the columns, the columns become the rows. That multiplied by my original m, 221, 115. Equals, okay. Row, column, let's go. 2 thirds times 2, 4 thirds. 2 thirds times 2, 4 thirds. A third times 1, 1 third. So 4 thirds plus 4 thirds plus 1 third. Hey, that's 9 thirds, that's 3. Cool. Um, running out of room. Okay, this times that. We get this entry. Two thirds times one, two thirds. Two thirds times one, two thirds. Two thirds times uh, one third times five, five thirds. Oh, these are bumping into each other. I hate when I do that. But uh, two thirds plus two thirds times five thirds, that's nine thirds. Hey, that's three. We got that right. All right, this row times that. Uh, that's negative 218 over square root of 18 minus 2 over square root of 18 plus 4 over square root of 18. Uh, hey, look, that equals to 0, so that's right. Uh, and our last one, uh, that's minus 1 over square root of 18 minus 1 over the square root of 18 plus 4 times 5, that's 20 over the square root of 18. Uh, and the result of that is 18 over the square root of 18, which is the same thing as the square root of 18. So as you can see, we got the same answer both ways. Um, this, is, this is the method that's much easier to remember. And if you aren't really in the mood to think about it, slash um, less likely to make mistakes, especially if you're doing this on a calculator, I would go with that method. Um, but it's important to the other, the other one as well. Um, so this has been QR factorization. Um, how to divide this matrix into these two matrices here, which have various applications in things, and we just like to know how to do that. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math-related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. Just click this link right here.